so some of the musical endeavors uh, that a lot of us grew up with was obviously like classic R&B. Um, I think I was the first one in my family to, well, I don't know. I think I was one of the first ones to kind of dive deep into the like grunge, alternative, you know, punk, metal, definitely the first one into metal, definitely the first one in industrial goth kind of music that was like outside of, you know, just like R&B or whatever, or quote unquote black music, but, um, but that shit is inherently black anyway, you know, um, especially rock and roll like very black um so I think for me some of the most uh some of the people that I feel like in terms of music really um had an influence on either my sound or or just music that I have been listening to for the last like two decades that I still listen to are Blonde Redhead. Um, if you haven't heard of Blonde Redhead, I think one of their best albums is Misery is a Butterfly. Um, I think the first time I heard one of their songs was from the ending of the movie Hard Candy um, with Elliot Page before his transition um and it was like the ending credits <clears throat> so good um and yeah they're really great live they're just like a you know I haven't really seen a lot of bands live and um they're 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 up there um this band called Aucho Sparks I still like never i still haven't come across um albums that uh that are like every single song is like a banger like i've never heard like an entire rock album alternative whatever this is like an indie band from chicago that has like or had like 10 members um and like one of my friends in Kentucky like discovered them, introduced them to um, like our little like weirdo artist, indie, hipster, whatever clique. I didn't, I never identified as a hipster, but back then since we were so apolitical, I think like we could have been considered that, but yeah, every like you can't find them on Spotify but I recently actually ordered a um an mp3 like a, a, a digital copy of their album um and like so good I think their album came out in like 2000 like or 2005 maybe so good I still listen to it I still listen to them um Crystal Castles um, I was the first time I heard Crystal Castles I was living I was living in the valley um, Reseda actually and I had a job at uh, at the Virgin Megastore and I think my first day it was like 2007-2008 you know um, I heard Alice practice like on the speakers or whatever and this little like you know like metal like blonde like metalhead girl was like showing me the ropes um and the song came Alice practice came on and I was like I literally <laughs> I was like who the fuck is this and um yeah, I mean, that first album really, really slapped. Um, they started progressively getting, like, more... 
I don't know what the word is, but I just really like the kind of throwback to like 8-bit, like Nintendo Core, Electronica, um, that was everything for me. And um, also, of course, you know, uh, the, the main music producer being very abusive uh, to Alice uh, Glass and um, her later coming out with a, a call out or like just like a kind of inf informative dump of like his abuse um, and you know for me it's like I hate that uh, but I also like you know Alice Practice is like it's such a good song and um yeah I think like you it's hard to separate you know artists from like the things that they've done but for me for that song and that that was like a a kind of pivotal moment in like music making and like experimentation and um this kind of like punky electro kind of vibe that I was like completely obsessed with at the moment. Rihanna. Rihanna and Frank Ocean are like the like the most like mainstream. I've listened to a lot of like mainstream music more so now than I did back when it like wasn't cool because like what the hell. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but it's you know part of that like masking kind of like you're you're trying to seem like un not uncouth but like yeah the sardonic like gothy kid who only listens to one genre of music and everything else is will and like you're just so above it like it's 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 a mask it's like 100 percent masking 101 if like you know you're making fun of other people who are listening to like you know other and i mean don't get me wrong there's still artists where i'm like ew i can't stand them because like they're so mainstream and they're such a they're like the epitome of like evil industry people um but i still like will listen to their stuff um frank ocean ocean was a really good one kind of like for the amount, the little bit of work that he has put out, um, it's just, it's such a powerful, like, that's really powerful to have that much, um, influence on, you know, cultures of creativity and industry, um, for, you know, just his artistic practice and, like, being very, like, calculated and <clears throat> also the fact that he's like a black bisexual man was really important to the yeah just like that whole genre of music but also like showing people that yeah people people can be black and have um just different sides to them that aren't just like in it almost like an introduction um musically into like intersectionality <clears throat> and that's why i appreciate frank ocean still listen to him um and then nine inch nails um i think i've like i've done a lot of art listening to nine inch nails i have consistently like listened to a lot of Nine Inch Nails music. It's just the most consistent thing that I've listened to since I was a child. Um, Aaliyah was a fan of Nine Inch Nails. Um, and it just said, that says something. Like it's like, like it, like Nine Inch Nails can transcend different kinds of people's interests. Um, you know, just like you imagined star muckers <laughs> and, um, 
what are my, the great below those are some of my favorite songs um but you know that like him going from from that to like marrying a really beautiful filipino woman and her being a front man front person for um the how to destroy angels band chef's kiss um because like who like where where was their actual filipino front people you know in the music industry uh at the time that wasn't like hip-hop do you do you have that is that anywhere else um particularly in like american culture uh or american media but oof, yeah uh those are um some of the top things and i think some music i got into a little bit later because like I am racially indigenous, I'm not culturally indigenous, um, has been, you know, uh, some powwow, um, and just other indigenous rappers and hip hop artists. And, uh, <clears throat> I think that's more in the last like five years of my life. Um, and you know, just being part of that big boom of like indigenous, like wave of like, music that is connected to land back and like defense of land and defense of culture uh, is also really important to resistance culture as a whole um and yeah like um so that's that's some of my this are uh, some of my favorite um musics that i have a lot of love for over the years <clears throat> Um, but yeah, stay tuned for the following videos where I talk more about some of my interests in films and television.